Okay, so I'm gonna show you everything right from the beginning. I'm going to show you how I prime, how I prep, how I clean her lashes, and then the full application. First, I'm gonna cover her hair and I'm gonna cover her uh, forehead just because I don't really want to touch her skin too often. Okay, I'm going to use this cover, hair cover for her uh, hair and also a tissue for the forehead just because I don't really want to touch her skin too often. And also, I'm going to use my mask just because we are working with glue. And we know that the glue has the cyanoacrylate that it's going to be a little bit stronger for uh, for you so I always suggest to have a mask just because you want to protect yourself okay I'm gonna apply this hair cover and now I'm going to use this tissue just because I don't want her to have those marks right after So in this case, when you come with your hand and do the application, you don't really touch the skin. Now I'm going to move her mask just a little down so I can apply the patch. First thing first, I will sanitize my hands once again. And then I'm using those microphone tape. I always like to tape them back just because they are very very sticky so once you tape them back it's very easy to work with them they are very flexible now take them up for me and I always start from the inner corner and then go exactly with the shape of her eye Once she closed, we can see that the tape is a little bit too off. So what I want to do, I want to untape and just fix a little bit down. We're gonna do the same with the other eye. Very important, when you apply the tape, make sure the light is off. The reason why I say the light has to be off is because you don't want to irritate the eyes. You don't want them to start watery just because the pad is not going to work and then it's not going to work with the application and all of those so make sure the light is off now i'm going to use some uh, tape just to pull up the leads so i can see the natural lashes better this is actually foam tape too and i like to cut them like a little smooth pieces so i'm gonna lift just a little bit the outer corner because this is more you can see the lid is a little bit down so you can just play with the lid and i'm going to put one more towards the inner corner so now i can see the lashes there i'm gonna do the same with the other eye you don't have to lift too much just because you don't want to see her eye right once you lift too much you will be able to see the eye inside so that will irritate when you come with the glue so make sure they are just a little tiny up towards you so you can see the natural lashes better now i'm going to brush them and i'm going to prime them i'm using this primer and then i'm using those microsoft just a little bit so I don't have too much now the primer is very good to actually clean and actually take all the makeup or all the you know oil or anything left on the natural lashes now if you feel that you have a lot of makeup and your client has full uh, eyeshadow or uh, mascara or things like that please use the foam cleanser just to make sure you clean very very well I have this foam cleanser that I usually use on my client, which is really, really good. It's also good for sensitive eyes, and it's also good to take the eyeshadow and uh, all the makeup off. Now, because my client doesn't have any makeup and her lashes are very, very clean, I only do the primer. Primer is basically based on uh, alcohol, 
which is gonna like I just mentioned it's going to clean in uh, any residue on it any mascara or any oil and I want to go up and down and basically touch every single lash now after you do this process you want to make sure that you dry them just because we are working with alcohol so alcohol and glue it's not a good fit so you want to make sure that you really really dry the natural lashes right after you're using the prime okay now i'm going to fan and i'm going to brush and now i'm 100 percent sure that they are nice and clean so the next step, I'm going to do the map and I'm going to measure her natural lashes so we can see what kind of blend are we gonna use. We already know the style. I want to create a cat eye just because I want to open her outer corner a little bit more. Now she does have a lot of lashes like I just mentioned and they are super super long. The only problem that I see in here, they are super super straight. So in this case, I'm going to use a C curl just because I don't want to use something super super curl because her natural lashes are flat. So if you think about when the natural lash is super flat and you're gonna add a curl like this, the bond and the connection on the natural lash with the extension is not gonna be perfect. So in this case, I want to use a C curl so the extension is gonna go right on top of the natural lash i will show you a little bit later so you can see the, the better application but this is what we're gonna use for her we're gonna use a c curl we're gonna use a cat eye style and now i'm going to do the map just because i want you to see better now when you do the measure and you want to measure the natural lash what you can do is you can take just piece of extension and go and measure whatever you see is the longest length right so now i just picked 12 so i can see how long her natural lash it is okay so i feel like in the middle where the longest length it is i feel like she has 11. in this case i can go at least one millimeter more so i would probably use 12. i don't want to create something super super dramatic because she doesn't use a lot of makeup so i want her uh, natural lashes to be super super natural so in this case i will start with something very very short like in the inner corner eight and then i will go a little by nine ten in the middle like i said i will use 11 and then towards to the outer corner i'm gonna use 12 and a couple of 11s so you can see that perfect cat now if we are talking about cat you you may think that the outer corner has to be super super long correct no not really because if we're gonna throw a 12 on the outer corner they're gonna look super super sad so in this case i want to go i will call this like half cat so when you go with the length you can go where her arch it is right where her arch it is you can throw the longest length and then just go down a little bit shorter like in my case it will be 12 the longest and then just a little more down towards the 11 and that's going to be a perfect cat Arm. Now we are going to do the same with the other eye. So this will be my map. Now I like to start from the outer corner and go all the way to the inner. And I also like to alternate the eyes. I want to do one section here and then one section to the other eye. The reason why I like to do and work in the same time with both of them is because imagine if your client has to get up and leave or something like that. Imagine if she only has one eye done. It's gonna be super, super weird, right? So in this case, we want to make sure that they are both kind of the same, right? Now I'm going to use this palette those are my favorite lashes they are from uh, Revo Lash and uh, like I just mentioned this is uh, C curl and also I'm going to use 0.07 now the reason why I use 0.07 is because she has a very very beautiful natural lashes they are super long they are super thick so I don't want to go a little bit uh, down than 0.07 
If I want to go a little bit down than 0.07, I will use probably a lot of volume. So in her case, because she has a full eye, I'm not going to use a full, um, a full look just because that will be a little too dramatic. So I would like to use something between 2 to 3D, not even 3 probably, just because I just mentioned she has a lot of natural lashes. Now I want to make sure that I'll do at least 90% coverage just because I want that perfect look. Okay, now I'm going to use this blue tray. This is my favorite just because I like to fix my base in those little corners and they are square. That helped me a lot. And then I'm going to use this glue. This is from Allure Lash. This is very, very good. I've been working with this for a couple months now and I really love it. And then I'm going to use my isolation tweezer. And then I'm going to use my volume tweezer. This is from Extreme Lashes. Both of them are from Extreme Lashes. So this is all I'm going to use today. I already shake the glue with the shaker, so you don't have to shake for at least a minute with your hand, which is a little bit easier for me. Okay, now I'm just going to put one drop. And then I'm going to clean the nozzle, just because I don't want any extra glue on this little part, right? So you can see it's nice and clean. Okay, and we're going to start the application. I'm going to sanitize my hands once again. My tools are already sterilized, but I like to use those pads just because I want to clean them once again. So remember I just said I'm going to start from the outer corner towards the inner corner. You can always make sure that the pad is applied correctly and nothing bothers her. So I'm going to put one fan of uh, the longest length just because I want to see if they are uh, if they are okay. You can always brush the lashes once you take them from the tray. So I'm going to pick around three lashes. I'm gonna put them back and I'm gonna separate them and make the fan. Once I like the fan, I will go into the glue and then I'm going to the natural lash. You can see the base is very, very thin. lashes I'm going to use 11. Remember I said you don't want to go all the way to the outer corner with a full length. And you always want to make sure that you don't go right next to each lash just because you want the glue to cure. So in this case I would like to go one fan and then leave a couple natural lashes and then go to the next lash just because I don't want to work right next to each other. That will give them a little more time to make sure that they are dry. Now, one thing that is really important, when you work with very, very straight lashes, you have to make sure that your angle is in the right position. So for example, when you come, right, when you come with the fan, your angle has to be more flat because her natural lashes are flat. If you come a little bit more towards the up, right, it's not going to be a perfect application because you only hit the base. Once you hit the base, they're gonna connect to the base, but you cannot let it go down. So it's not gonna be a perfect and fully connected. So for example, you will make the fan, and now imagine if you come like this, that will be a not, not a perfect fit. But if you come a little bit more flat, you will set exactly on the natural lash. Because her natural lashes are super flat. When you work with curly lashes, of course your angle is gonna be a little bit towards your face, right? It's not gonna be flat towards her uh, cheeks. This is extremely important. When you work with those fans and when you have a little bit more volume than 2, 3D, pressure and angle is all that matters. If your pressure is not okay, you're gonna lose the fan. If your pressure is too tight, you're gonna squeeze the lashes. So you have to be right in the middle. 
Now, when I work with, for example, wispy lashes or cat eye, I want to make sure that I'm going in the right direction. So I always check with the little dental mirror so I can make sure that they are uh, nice and beautiful and they are not stick to the pad. Thank you.